Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. Steve, KM9G, and uh, we're going to go over how to start a ham club today. I am going to be the responsible party for the ham club in my area and I'm going to go over all the things you need, uh, paperwork, and what you do, and getting started, and it's easier than you think it is. Stick around. This will come as no shock to you, but the first thing you're going to need to start a ham club is a coffee pot. Any coffee pot will do, but you're going to need a coffee pot. This just isn't going to work without coffee. The next thing you're going to need is some kind of space to put that coffee pot in. Maybe some coffee mugs, some chairs, and maybe a spot to put up some radio equipment. This radio equipment is all donations from other people who are in the area that are joining the club with me. We've got a 2 meter 440 Yezu FT8100 that was a little out of frame. There it is. Uh, trip light power supply. I'm thinking that's an Astron that somebody's painted up nice and pretty and cleaned up. And then another Astron down below. Uh, that's a 2 meter 220, 144 to 220 megahertz antenna tuner. I didn't even know they made them down that low, so that's good. This is an Alinco DR150. This is two meters only. For all you CB fans out there, this is a Cobra 19 DX2. A regular MFJ Versa tuner. We probably all have about three of these in our shack somewhere. This is a Yezu FT450D. Yep, 450D. And this one here is pretty cool. This is Kenwood's... What model is this? Kenwood's TS520. And this is the hybrid tube rig, solid state rig, and uh, that's going to be fun to play with. Another thing you're going to need in your ham club is some talent, and we've got a pretty talented guy that uh, joined up with us who made this wall plate. It's a couple of barrel connectors for your coax and a grounding lug, and then we're working on getting that hole through the building so that we can get uh, our antennas up and running. So antenna wiring is low voltage stuff. You can get these, uh, they call them old work boxes, I believe, where the drywall and everything's already done and uh, you get the ability to fold a tab over to connect to the back side of the drywall. There's two screws on it and you screw down, you can see the tab right there. You screw down to clamp onto the drywall and then that's just a straight shot through the wall and we need to get a drill and drill through the outside. This is a masonry building on the outside, so we'll need to drill through that. And then, and then this is the back side of that wall plate. So you can see the other side of the barrel connectors there. You can see the ground lug with the ground wire coming off of it. Uh, we used a couple of green lead punches to punch through and set the holes up to match up with the standard two gang electrical box part. And then after that, it is all paperwork. So I will switch over to the computer and I'll show you some of the paperwork that you need. Start recording too. Let's get the stage set. Take a nice deep breath and start talking. Okay. So as promised, this is the paperwork introduction side of things. Uh, this is how to become an ARRL affiliated club. This is the documentation that you would need to create to be a club member with ARRL. Uh, ARRL is a fantastic organization that a lot of hams are a member of and it's a lot of uh, a lot of people who are interested in the hobby come to this website to find out what events are happening in the area in the area what clubs there are in the area where to get testing in the area in their area etc 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 so this is actually a, a pretty good club to be affiliated with if you want some visibility for your club so this is the web page to go to it. Don't worry about finding the link or writing it down. It will be in the description below. Uh, but let's go over this page real quick. This is the Affiliated Club Application Instructions page. It goes over very briefly on what to do with this page. And at the bottom of the page, it gets to the important stuff, uh, which is the application to become an affiliated club. Let's click on that and take a look at it. And it started at the bottom of the page. Let's go back to the top. The six steps to ARRL affiliation. 
and it'll go over all of those steps, complete the forms, email it to clubs at ARRL.org. They will check the forms for completeness, and the local director will approve or disapprove of your club's affiliation. It's going to be really hard to be disapproved, so don't worry about that. Um, they might make some suggestions on changes. When we filled out our club, there was a question on the amount of people that were able to vote and what formed a quorum and that kind of thing based on the membership in our club. Currently, there's only four people, and that meant that two of them formed a quorum, which is fine. Uh, the goal of our club is to grow and expand and bring forth new goodness into the hobby and all that wonderful stuff that all kinds of radio clubs form for, and hopefully at some point we will have a larger membership base, and that larger membership base will make a larger quorum a requirement. And if it doesn't, then we will change the Constitution when we get there. All of this stuff can be changed. It's not easy to change, but it's not hard to change either. Uh, next regular meeting or by mail-in vote, the ARL Executive Committee will approve or disapprove your club's application. So we go to our local director, and then we go to the ARL EC, and then upon EC, you will be presented with a charter affiliation and begin to receive affiliated club benefits. And then there's a little paragraph here that says you need to submit an annual report at least once a year. No big deal. Resolution of affiliation, club name, address, city, state, zip. That's all pretty uh, straightforward. My suggestion for club name is to start with the acronym that you want and then work backwards trying to find words that fit into it. So we came up with two names. Uh, the first one was Warts, which was Wisconsin Amateur Radio and Technical Society. And the second name was ARARA, Apple River Amateur Radio Association, and we thought ARARA was better, funnier, less funny, I don't know. We picked ARARA and uh, went forward with it. So we put in Apple River Amateur Radio Association and the address of the building that we're going to use for our clubhouse. And then I signed it and stuck my call sign there with my title and the date. Uh, there's four members in the club. There's four typical positions in organizations, your president, your vice president, your secretary, and your treasurer. So I am the president of the club, and that means I get to sign all the paperwork. Resolution of affiliation, and check the boxes. Number of voting members who are licensed amateurs, number of voting members total, number of voting members who are ARL membership, and then the total membership. Again, just fill all this stuff out. It's fairly straightforward and not all that hard to do. Initial club detail report. Club name, call sign, ARL section, division. Obviously, you won't have a club call sign until after you have a club. So we'll get into getting a club call sign after this. Meeting location, meeting day and time, website URL, club email. Um, and I just picked the Gmail account, and that was fine. Um, check if you would like your club to have an ARL forwarding address. Um, pretty straightforward there. The club contact person. The club president, those can be the same people. The newsletter editor can also be the same person. The club detail report. This is where you check the boxes that you want to show up for in ARL website searches. So if I go to the website and I say, show me all the clubs in my area that do DX, um, my club would return in those search results because I checked this box. So check all the boxes of stuff that you want to be interested in. Membership roster. Fill out your... Members, call sign, first name, last name, whether they're a voting member or not. These will be your founding members of the club. And then this goes over some information on what is a constitution. And you should read that over real quickly because the next step is to go look at the sample constitution. Well, let's go look at the sample constitution. This one's a 13-page document. We're not going to go over all 13 pages. Uh, but basically, take a look at this. Edit in anything that you would like to add. Edit out anything that you don't want to have. And get it rolling. And then get it sent off. Again, this can all be changed in the future. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You just want to get your club started. You want to get members. And then if there are any issues, you will be bound by the Constitution. And if the Constitution doesn't make sense to be bound by because you forgot something or omitted something, then make a change. Nothing is set in stone. So, Again, the link to this will be in the description below, so you can go find it there. After you get your affiliated club kit filled out and your sample constitution created and your members vote on it and decide, 
you can send it over to clubs at arl.org. Clubs at arl.org will then do their thing as we discussed earlier as far as approvals go. And from that point, you can apply for a club call sign. And again, I will have the link to this in the description below, so you don't need to write it down. Um, but basically go through this and check all boxes that apply, fill out all information that applies. And this one's a pretty short two-page form. And the second page is just information. And the first page is actually what you must fill out. So let's go over this first page real quick. If you are a new club, you would be checking the new box. And then you would fill out the applicant information for the trustee of the club. This is the person that's going to get all the club mailing. Um, so last name, first name, middle initial, their call sign, the trustee's call sign, not the club call sign because you don't have that yet. A phone number and an email address to uh, have on file to contact that. Club name, club mailing address, which can be your home address, can be a P.O. box, can be the address of the clubhouse, just somewhere where you're actually going to get mail. Um, basic qualification question, and this is a FCC type thing. Um, has the applicant or any party to this application or any party directly or indirectly controlling the applicant ever been convicted of a felony by the by the by any state or federal court? Check yes or no as appropriate. If yes, see basic see FCC basic qualification questions, instructions, and procedures on the back of this form, and then certify all that stuff and sign and date it. And then here's some more of those form instructions that we had discussed. And really, that's it. So what I got for you next is a slideshow of us finishing up the through the wall antenna port. I wanted to take some real quick pictures that I didn't get any video and a lot of it was just drill noises and banging hammers and that's really not pleasant audio. So let me pull that up on the screen real quick. All right, so here's a picture of Rod uh, drilling through the wall. You can see down here we've got a cold chisel that we use to break up some of the masonry uh, with a big hammer. And then finally we picked out a piece of rebar. It didn't need to be much. I mean, it's just concrete brick stucco. You just needed really the action of getting through. So we took a piece of rebar and shoved it into a hammer drill and shoved the hammer drill through the hole in the wall that we made on the inside so we could locate on the outside where it went. And we were pretty lucky when we created this antenna port that we didn't really hit any concrete joints or any wiring or anything really you just have to get started and then solve problems as they pop up and so that's what we did and we didn't have any problems and that's what the hole looked like coming through the outside and since we used that small piece of rebar to go through to the outside it didn't really do a lot of damage to the stucco and that all fit inside the footprint of the pvc that we were going to use to run the antennas through the wall there's a picture of the hole to the outside as you're looking through the box on the inside again this is a low voltage wiring box and as a low voltage wiring box, it does not have a back side, so it was pretty easy to drill through it. And that's the PVC shoved through. Obviously, we backed that back out a bit to make room for the antennas. That was just a, uh, a shot as we finally made it through and everybody celebrated that we got it. And then this is what the PVC looks like on the outside. So there's a little bit of a, a drip loop so that it doesn't collect rainwater or anything. And then when that was done, we put two ground rods in that same rebar you saw earlier, we hammered two ground rods in so they're just above those plant leaves at the bottom there and uh, caulked around the hole and we are now good to go with coax and grounding through the wall. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get a club started. Uh, we're going to have some more videos coming up of actually wiring the station together, uh, hooking that ground up to the back of all the equipment, hooking the coax up to the equipment and what antennas we choose. I'm uh, not really sure what antennas we're going to choose because of the footprint of the lot, but the most important thing with any radio is getting on the air, not spending the most amount of money on an antenna. So we're looking at either a ground mount vertical that's temporary, or a roof mount vertical that's a little less temporary, or some type of dipole, which may or may not be temporary. So stick around. Thanks for being awesome.